you've made. God, you've given us breath. You've given us life. We magnify you. We thank you. You say in your word, let everything that hath breath praise you. And we praise you this morning. We lift our, our voices and our hands and our hearts, our minds, God, to glorify you. We center on you today. You are the very essence of our being. God, you're the center of everything that we do. We praise you for it. We thank you, Lord. You're a good God. You're a marvelous God. You've never failed us. You've never let us down. You've always been right there every step along the way. And we give you praise and glory. We thank you for it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Would you take a moment, just talk to the Lord. Close your eyes and just ask the Lord to touch your mind and your focus to center on him. Amen. Can we do that all across this house? Let's just ask the Lord. God, would you touch my mind? I pray that you touch my mind. Touch my focus. God, I know there's all kinds of things that I could be thinking about and focusing on, but God, I want to be focused on you. I want my mind to be centered on you. In the name of the Lord, help my mind to be centered on you today. In the name of Jesus, touch my spirit. I give you praise. I pray that your word today touches us. It transforms us. God, help us to be in alignment with you, your mind, your will, your plan, your design. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. If you would look back at the cameras, I want us to pray right now for those that are tuning in. By the way, our website and also Revival Radio. Let's pray for them right now. In the name of the Lord. God, I know there are people that are tuning in from around the world. The people are going to be watching this message and this service, God. They're going to be listening as they drive down the road in their cars, God. They're going to be people that are searching for you, people that are looking for hope. They're looking for strength. God, they're looking for direction and instruction. And God, I pray that this morning something takes place in a supernatural realm, God, that reaches people all around the world, and we give you the praise for it right now. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for it. We thank you, Lord. Can we lift up our voices and our hands and together, together, I want us just to thank the Lord for what God is going to do in this place today. God's good. He's a good God. He's a mighty God. Amen. Can we do that together? In the name of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I worship you. I magnify you. This is the day that you've made, and I worship you. You know exactly what you're doing. I praise you, Lord. There's nothing outside of your control. Your arm's not short. You're not slack concerning your promises. Your ear is not deaf. You are a mighty God. Hallelujah. 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 I praise you, Jesus. I dedicate my hands and my lips to magnify you. My hands will magnify you today. My lips will magnify you. My soul will magnify you. My soul will magnify you. My mind, my emotions, I will magnify you for you are a good God. You are a mighty God. My praise and my worship is not going to be controlled by my circumstances. It's not going to be controlled by what's around me. I'm going to magnify you because you are worthy of it. You are worthy of it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Would you help me right now? Amen. I want us to turn this place into a a mighty room of just worship and praise. Would you lift up your voice? I know it's a Sunday morning. Hallelujah. Would you just lift up your voice? As you're clapping your hands, would you lift up your voice? Amen. Open up your mouth. Glorify the name of the Lord. He's worthy. I worship you. I magnify you. You are a good God. Hallelujah. Come on. Would you open up your voice? Say it out loud. I worship you. I praise you, Jesus. We love to call your name. It's something we cannot explain. That happens when we proclaim your great name. Your great name. 
overlooked in all of our weakness. No matter what you came in here today, if you will begin to lift him up, he will strengthen you as you worship him. Hallelujah. You are my strength, yes. Strength. Just back. 
you this morning. I don't know what you came here needing from the Lord. I don't know where you might be struggling in life, but I'm reminded in scripture of, of a man that heard that Jesus was coming by and he decided to climb up in a tree so he could get a glimpse. Another one decided that he was going to holler out. He was blind Another decided that she was going to push her way through the crowd to get to Jesus. A few friends decided that their friend who couldn't get to Jesus, that they were going to go up on top of the house and create an opening. I don't know what you're facing this morning, but I can tell you that his presence is here. You're not going to go and physically tear an opening or climb up in a tree today, but I tell you what you can do you can begin to open up your voice, lift your hands, and begin to worship and magnify Him. And as you begin to praise Him, you're going to draw near to Him. You're going to feel His presence. Amen. I would encourage you this morning to enter into worship. Take time to, to worship and magnify Him. Don't, don't get caught up. We've been around long enough, many of us. We know it's two songs and offering, a song and meet and greet, and a song and then preaching, and then we go home. But how about today, instead of knowing everything that's going to be happening and just moving our way through the service, how about we recognize the fact that the presence of the Lord is here and we are going to engage in worship and praise, lifting up the name of Jesus. I believe that God wants to do something in somebody's heart and life in this place this morning. Would you worship Him and just magnify Him? And maybe it's not even you that needs Him right now, but maybe it's somebody near you that just needs to feel his presence in the midst of your worship, in the midst of you lifting up the name of Jesus. Perhaps God will begin to do something in their life. I worship you, magnify you, exalt you, oh Lord. You're so good, you're so good, you're so good. In the name of Jesus, in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. I, I know this is perhaps unorthodox right now. I know this is not the norm. This is not in the schedule. But if you need a touch from the Lord, I want you to step out from where you're at, right out into the aisle. You don't have to come down here. Just step out into the aisle. You need a touch of the Lord in your life right now. It may be healing in your body. It may be something finances. It may be something on the job. You need God to touch. You step out in the aisle right now. Amen. Right where you're at, there are people near you. Reach over. You're near them. Reach over. Would you lay hands on them right now? We're going to pray in the name of the Lord. God, I know that you are a healer. I know that you are a deliverer. God, you are a provider. And I pray right now this morning that, God, you do something that I cannot do. We cannot do. But you are God Almighty. And there's absolutely nothing and there's no person that will ever step in the way of what you want to do. You are a mighty God. We align ourselves with you. And our step this morning is a step of faith that our trust is in you. It's not in man. It's not in our abilities. 
It's not in our capability. In the name of the Lord God, it's in you. We give you praise and glory for it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 I see God moving. I see people that are weeping. People that are feeling the presence of the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus, we give you praise and glory. Amen. Now across the house, how about we lift up our voice and praise him. He's a good God. stay a little quiet and kind of move through things. I just don't feel that way. I feel like praising the Lord. I feel like lifting him up, magnifying him. He's good. Yes. Amen. We have a lot to be excited about. I, I, I'm not the preacher. I know what we're getting ready to do, but I'm telling you, I feel like magnifying him, glorifying him. He is a good God. Can I, can, I, can I give you just a little bit of a testimony why I'm so excited this morning? About 10 years ago, I walked into a, a classroom out east in college, and I met a young lady from Taiwan. And she, by the end of the week, looked at me. She said, there is something different about you. And I'm amongst other colleagues who are much more accomplished by the world standards of success and degrees that I don't have and been a part of schools that I've never attended and I'm feeling as though that I am the least and she looks at me she said there's something different about you she said there is an anointing on your life and the Lord spoke to me and said you're going to be an impact in her life she credits me for helping her to have and achieve her doctorate. She said, I wouldn't have my doctorate if it wasn't for Eugene Wilson. And this past fall, a friend of mine moved to Taiwan. I have connected the two of them together just uh, about uh, uh, two months ago. He met up with her. She has a small group, a house church. And the first time ever, a Buddhist lady walked into that group. And my friend said, the Lord spoke to him, said, I'm getting ready to heal her. Her leg was two inches shorter, one leg than the other. God healed her instantly and filled her with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. But that's not all. She has repeatedly been meeting with, with him and his family. 
He's been teaching her Bible studies, teaching about baptism in the name of Jesus, the only name whereby we must be saved. He's been teaching her about baptism in the name of Jesus, uh, talking more about miracles. She said, I've never seen anything like this. And this past week, just Tuesday, I received a text from my friend, and there are people, one after another, receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost and people being baptized in the name of Jesus. I'm excited about what God is doing. Amen. I'm expecting that here this morning. I believe that God's going to fill somebody with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Somebody can go down in the... And the baptism will take in the name of Jesus in the water and come up a new man. Yeah. I'm telling you, some of you should have drinking some coffee this morning. Because looking at your face, I'm telling you what, you look like you're about ready to walk into. I'm thinking it, I'm just not going to say it. We are in the house of the Lord. God is good. He's mighty. He's worthy of praise. Amen. Amen. The ushers are coming. The ushers are coming at this time. If you want to give by the way of tithe or check, just lift up your hand. You can tell it's been a while since I've led service on Sunday morning because I'm, I'm ready to, like, preach for a little bit. If you'd like to give by the way of tithe and check, lift up your hand. The ushers will take care of that for you. Also, you can give by the way of the kiosk in the back and online. Do not pay attention to the text to give because uh, it's taken down right now. It's not working. We'll get that back up shortly. And uh, thank you uh, for, for doing that. While you are preparing to give, I want to make mention of just a few announcements. If you are a lady, would you stand with me? You're a lady, stand with me. Tell me what's going on this week. Say it again. That's right. Shine is this week. Amen. Starting uh, tomorrow night will be bag and uh, binder assembly, work night and worship on Wednesday. Shine bilingual start uh, is going on Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Here comes Sister McKee with more announcements about Shine. Sorry, I can't help myself. I can't help myself. I'm choosing not to. That's an excuse. Uh, uh, Monday night, today's the last day to register for Shine. So after that, you can register at the door. It'll be more expensive, so don't do that. So go to the foyer and register today for Shine. I feel like I really, it's like a scepter. Do it. <laughs> uh, register for Shine today. And then Monday night's a work night, uh, 6 o'clock. We really appreciate your help. And then uh, 7 o'clock uh, on, or whenever, on Wednesday night's a work night. And then 7 o'clock service Thursday night with Donna Linville. Classes on Friday, 10 to 12 or 1. Awesome classes. And then Friday night service with Janice Showstrand. It's going to be amazing. So please don't miss out. If you haven't registered, please do that. We do still have some spaces, very few. It's going to be jam-packed, power-packed. It's going to be amazing. Thank you. Thank you. You may be seated. You don't want to miss that. Easter weekend is coming soon. That is April the 23rd and 24th. And on uh, Saturday, on Saturday from 11 to 3, you don't want to miss that. Fun, food, fellowship, egg hunt, games, prizes, all kinds of things. Sunday will be a candy rain. It's going to be very exciting. And uh, you want to be a part of that Easter weekend. And also one last announcement. This evening after service, Brother Harris wants to meet with the parents and youth that are going to NAYC in a very short tag-in meeting. We are glad to have our children here. And uh, they're going to sing right now while you're preparing to give. After they're done singing, then we will uh, receive the offering. But they're going to sing right now. Put your hands together, and let's welcome our children. This is a Super Sunday. All right. Praise the Lord. Today is a very special day because we have the kids' choir. And it's also our baby dedication Sunday, so it's all about the kids today. And they're going to be doing lots of motions, and so we want y'all to be able to see them. So you're going to need to stand up to see them. I know we're doing lots of if you're up, you're up. If you're down, you're down today. So you're getting your extra. If you have a Fitbit, if that's still a thing, you're getting your counts in today. All right? That's the way it should be in a Pentecostal church anyway, right? But uh, I don't know if you can see them with this thing here, but they're, they're going to be up there. So they're going to be moving around and worshiping for Jesus and so we don't want to be a model of how not to respond to a choir, right? So I know that when my choir sings and y'all sit on them, it's aggravating. And uh, 
So we want to not be that way. We want to corporately participate and support these awesome kids and let them know that being in church and worshiping Jesus is the absolute best thing on planet Earth. Amen? All right, so they're going to talk about swimming in the river and in the spirit and dancing and praising. And so we want to have a good time and worship the Lord with the kids' choir right now. Do you need the solo mic? All right, Sister Bentley Linton, here we go.
Remain standing with me. Remain standing with me. The ushers are coming right now. It's a pleasure and an honor to be able to give back to the Lord. Amen. Can we lift our voices right now? Just thank the Lord for the opportunity to give back to Him. God, we give you praise and glory for the opportunity to give back to you. Tithe and offering, God. The tithe is yours. We don't want to rob you of what is yours. We know that you are faithful. You are a God who takes care of us. You are the provider. God, everything else is the source. You are the means. You are the source. And we give you the praise and glory for that today. In Jesus' name, everyone say amen. Amen. Let's come and give to the Lord right now. God's a good God.
Amen. Today is a special day, as already been mentioned, and um, this is a um, very special day in the in the lives of these families and uh, these children that are going to be dedicated. We're having a baby dedication, and uh, I was dedicated some many years ago, and uh, I don't remember it. <laughs> I have a decent memory, but I don't have that good of a memory. But I do know this much, that when my mom and dad dedicated me to the Lord, they weren't just dedicating me, they were making a commitment to the Lord, how they were going to raise me. And that's what makes this so special today. Moms and dads, we make it a commitment. And family members make a commitment to do what is right in the lives of these children. And then uh, here in a little bit, we will all join in together and make a commitment to do what is right because all, our, all of us impact lives of those around us. And uh, it's such a special moment. And um, we, we, just so you know, we have been um, having baby dedications for the last couple of years where we have joined in with our Spanish ministries, but because of a growing church, and we're very thankful for that, we have decided to um, have a little bit of separation. So we have our English service, baby dedication in two weeks. Spanish ministries will also be having a, a baby dedication. And what I would like to do here this morning is um, I would like just to introduce you just for a moment to um, the babies that are going to be dedicated to the Lord, and we have two. And if, if you would, the, the parents of Emma Garcia, would you stand and just turn, and uh, if you got Emma, show her, lift her up. Maybe a grandparent looks like it's got her. You can go ahead and stand. Mom, Dad, stand, and grandparent, go ahead and show the baby off there. Turn it around where everybody can see her. That is Emma. And... Uh, we're going to dedicate her to the Lord, beautiful, beautiful baby. And then also we have Camden Gage. And, um, and if you would stand and just show him off to the everybody there. Camden Gage, amen. And uh, beautiful, beautiful baby. Pastor and Sister McKee are coming at this time and will um, share with you, and we'll, we'll be taking a moment here in a little bit and praying together, and at that time, we'd like for all the family, including the distant relatives, to join in with us. I'll be back in a minute about that, but we want to hear from the Lord. This is a special moment. Amen. God is so good. I just want to very briefly mention to uh, our video team, uh, all of our AV team, if y'all could, we want to see these babies again. So if y'all could take that camera and that camera over there and just kind of turn and, and uh, there you go. How about that? Is that better? That'll work. My microphone's off, but I can still hear myself. It's it's me. How about this? Is this better? Can y'all hear? All right. All right. Well, thank the Lord. We we're having all kinds of sound issues this morning. I apologize for that. In case you're wondering, our, our choir marks are all missing today. So I don't know what happened to our choir. That's why you probably couldn't hear the kids. But uh, thank the Lord. There's no mics in heaven. Amen. Unless, yeah, unless your name is Mike, and we hope you make it. Um, so... Amen. You're going to have to pray extra hard. All right. Uh, but I, if, you, if you guys could, if, if you wouldn't mind, just hold those babies up one more time. And let's, uh, let's get the cameras focused in. I don't, doesn't matter which one wants to try it. Yeah, go ahead and stand up. You want to try it? Just aim the camera, turn the camera. Which one of y'all? And they have it up on the screens on the side. I want everybody to get a good look. Uh, we're waiting. All right. There we go. There we go. Well, you can turn around. There we're going to make it. All right. I don't think there's any babies over there. But uh, there we go. I think we got them all. All right. Here we go. 
Amen. <laughs> this is uh, Amen. All right. Thank the Lord. I want to very quickly hurry on. Uh, what we're doing today, for those of you that are unfamiliar with baby dedication, this is not a process of salvation, but I do believe it has scriptural precedence. I'm going to have, have my wife say what she feels here in just a moment, but I, I want to um, just say uh, it's, it's in Matthew uh, 19 and, and 14 where Jesus said, Suffer the little children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of heaven. Jesus highlighted, he promoted the idea of children having access to him. And uh, the reason why we take time uh, to have what we call baby dedications uh, is, is actually threefold. First of all, we are confirming our love for God. And um, secondly, giving our kids to the, uh, back to the Lord in prayer is a clarification of ownership. So it's a sign of devotion, a clarification of ownership. We all belong to the Lord. And, um, and then thirdly, it is a commitment to raise our children up God's way. And uh, I'd like to ask if the families could go ahead and come and stand here in front. And... Um, side and one on the other and those uh, family members that are with them if you could come and stand on either side <clears throat> amen all the family we got a great representation family here today amen Let's see everyone here amen thank god One of the most um, interesting and probably challenging Proverbs is 22 and 6 that says, Train up a child in the way that they should go, and when, or when he, he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. And for every parent that has ever had their children walk away from God, it creates a problem, doesn't it? Because you know I raised them to love God, raised them to serve the Lord, and yet when they got older, they made a different choice. And I want to I tell those parents that are here today that the proverb isn't just dealing with whether or not they'll live for the Lord. It's, it's, it's dealing with the fact that they will never be able to escape what they know. And that it, at the right moment, the right environment, God can turn them around in a pig pen. We need to keep praying every day. Amen. And so it's important that we invest in these children while we can and uh, invest uh, this, this truth into them. I just want to quickly say what an honor it is to be a part of your family's life on this special day and that we want to be a part of your child's and family's journey all the way through. We think it's really important that the environment that you raise your child in and the people that you allow to have influence over your children is extremely important. And we want to let you know that we take that responsibility very seriously, that we will speak the truth in love, and this will always be a safe place for your families to come and hear the truth of the Word of God. And whether they mess up or have great accomplishments, we're going to be here to celebrate them and cry with them and support them no matter what comes their way, and also you as parents. And to also warn you that just like today, sometimes things don't go as planned, and that's how it is with kids. And I told them in the back, I said, embrace the chaos. When there's chaos means there's life. Whenever it's quiet, the that means there's no life. So that means things are happening when there's chaos. So I know sometimes life can be unnerving with little ones, but you're literally holding the purity and the love of God in your arms. And you have a great responsibility. And I know that you're going to do a great job. And we're praying for you. And we love you. And thank you for this opportunity to be a part of their lives. Hey Amen. We would like for um, the parents to make a covenant 
today, and I'm going to read a verse of Scripture, make a statement, and then ask you to say, I do, if you'll make this commitment today. Psalms 127, verse 3, Behold, children are a heritage from the Lord. The fruit of the womb is a reward. So do you recognize that your child is a gift from God, giving thanks to him for blessing your life with his gift? And if you do, please say, I do. Proverbs 22 and 6 says, train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. So do you pledge to raise your child in the fear, which is in the awe of God, and all ways that are pleasing to the Lord? And if you pledge to raise your child in the fear of the Lord, would you just simply say, I do. Matthew 18 and 6 says, whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, it would be better for him if a millstone were hung around his neck and he were drowned in the depths of the sea. So do you promise to protect your child from harmful things? And if you do, just say, I do. Matthew 10 and 37, anyone who loves his father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Anyone who loves his son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. So do you promise to support the will of God in your child's life, not stand in opposition to God's will in their life? Would you please say, I do? Amen. And then if the church, if you would stand with me. And all of us carry responsibility in shaping the lives of children. And so to the entire congregation, I ask the following, do you pledge to faithfully love God and others, live a spirit-filled, spirit-led life, and knowing that you are shaping the lives of these babies. And if you do, would you join in with me and say, I do. I do. Amen. And now we're going to pray. I ask that you please remain standing, asking our care pastors if they would please come and uh, stand with us here. We're going to take just a few moments, and we're going to pray over the families as well as these children. Amen. Let's, let's join in prayer together. Father, I thank you, Lord. God, I thank you, God, I pray, Lord Jesus, your blessing. God, I ask that you would keep your hand on him. God, keep your anointing upon his life. Protect him, Lord Jesus, from the dangers and dangerous world. God, I ask, Lord Jesus, at the appropriate age, God, that you would allow him to see his need for salvation. God, I thank you for this life. Lord Jesus, lead him to you for your purpose and for your glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's continue to pray. Stretch your hands out. Amen. God's. I want us all just to stretch our hands out one more time, and I want you to say this not only as a statement, but as a prayer to God. Today, Lord, come on, say it out loud. Today, Lord, we dedicate these children back to you. Keep them safe. Protect their lives. Anoint these families. And, Lord, let one day these children come back to this altar again. And, Lord, I pray that you would allow them to be filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And, to, Lord Jesus, let them go down in water in the name of Jesus. We pray.
In Jesus' name. Everybody say in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. Clap your hands if you love the Lord. thing to give our children back to God. I do want to just say to all of our uh, parents, if you're interested in dedicating your child to the Lord, we have a, a system for that, and so we encourage you, you can go to our website and actually uh, uh, there's a form there that you can fill out and, and you can schedule your next opportunity and uh, so we, we want all of our families that can participate in that. Amen. One more time, let's clap our hands and love the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. We want to take this opportunity to welcome our guests. We're so delighted that each of you are with us here today. If it's your first, to first time or second time to be with us here at the Pentecostals, you should have received either a first time or second time guest card. There are some free gifts associated with that. We want you to have them. So if it's your first or second time with us and you did not fill out a guest card on the way in the auditorium this morning, lift your hand. The ushers will get one to you very quickly. First or second time and you did not receive a guest card. I see your hand. All right. Looks like we have everyone taken care of. We want to welcome you at this time. While we're thinking of it, though, let's welcome our online audience, those watching via the Internet, listening Revival Radio. We love you. We're glad you're with us today. Our prayer is that the Lord will bless you. Amen. So, church, will you help me welcome our guests this morning? All right. So, if you would, our guests, when I call your name, when you hear your name or something that sounds like your name, just lift your hand and wave at me so we can see where you're seated. We don't want to embarrass you, but we do want to greet you. So, when I call your name, please just lift your hand so we can see you. Our first time guests, Dennis and Cynthia Lopez. Dennis, we're over here on the left. God bless you. We're glad you're here this morning. Ralph and Mona De Leon. Also over here on the left. God bless you folks. We're glad you're here today. All right. Junior and Sherry Vargas, where are you seated this morning? Also here on the left. Man, we are so glad you folks are here together. I'm assuming you came together. All right. We're glad you're here this morning. Longtime friend, Brother Ricky Paul, over here on the right. Brother Ricky, where are you? Oh, he just slipped out. Amen. This is uh, Sister Brooke Gage's dad. We love Brother Ricky. Also, Tony and Brina Ferrer. I don't know if I got the last name right. Back here on the, on the right. God bless you. Lift your hand one more time. We're glad you guys are here this morning. Edward Hooks, where are you at this morning, Edward? Over here on the left. God bless you, sir. We're glad you're here. And looks, the card looked like it said Brianda, but I'm not sure if that's right. Does that sound like, over here on the left, God bless you. We're glad you're here today. Second time guest, Jennifer Hooks. Where are you seated this morning? Also here on the left side, God bless you, Jennifer. We're glad you're back. Amen. Second time guest. All right, some special guests, Darren and Jody Stetton. Where are you folks at this morning? Wave your hand. Oh, right here in the center section. God bless you. We're glad you're here. Also, brother and sister DeRuin, Sister Gage's grandparents. Brother and sister DeRuin, wave your hand at us. We love you guys. We're glad you're here today. All right. Pentecostals, let's all stand. All right. We're going to put five minutes on the clock. You can make your way around to our guests. Just one. No classes dismissing today. Everyone's staying in the auditorium. Five minutes on the clock. Make your way around. Greet our guests. When the music comes up and the time runs out, make your way back to your seats. God bless you this morning.
it still works. Say it still works. Say yes. Say yes. Say it. Hallelujah. Thank the Lord. Amen. Thank God for his blood. Amen. There is power. Somebody say power. There's power in the blood of Jesus. Amen. And uh, to all of our guests that are here with us today, I just want to join in with my sweet wife and, and all and the rest of the ministry team and say we're honored to have you here today. If I haven't yet met you, my name is Rob McKee, and I'm the senior pastor here at the Pentecostals. We're thrilled to have you here today. I, I certainly hope if you're looking for a church home, uh, we have something we say it every Sunday. Every service is different. And uh, anytime uh, we gather together in a Pentecostal church, Things are different, and so it takes about six services. So we, we just we like to talk about sticking six. So if you're looking for a church home, we encourage you to stick six. And in six services, you'll get a good picture of what we're all about. If you would, quickly turn with me uh, into the New Testament, uh, what we call chapter, a letter uh, of Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews 13, and we will uh, read a few verses there as the foundation for what I feel God wants me to talk about today. And uh, very excited to see a lot of uh, old friends, people I hadn't seen them in a while, but it's good to see you in the house of the Lord today. And I am so thrilled about being able to preach. And by the way, uh, I've mentioned this to a few folks, but tonight we're so excited to have uh, Brother Harold Wilson here. He's going to be preaching. Elder Wilson pastored for over 30 plus years or at least, right? 40, almost 50 years. I guess it's a, 50 is over 30. So, uh, uh, but in uh, the uh, state of, of Indiana and has served on many boards and is a great uh, preacher of the gospel and um, also Father, Dr. Wilson, so we're very uh, very excited about having him here in the service this evening, so I encourage you to be back tonight, and uh, choir singing tonight, youth choir, our youth choir is singing this evening, so I'm very excited about what God is going to do. Let me just kind of let you know, we this year, we're, we're getting very close to Easter, and um, our Resurrection Sunday, however you want to refer to it, but uh, that uh, last year, I believe we we've tried a lot of things. We've had Easter dramas and different things. This year, I'm going to try something that I I think I've only done once or twice since pastoring here, um, and uh, not quite at the scale that we're going to do. I'm going to begin a an, an illustrated sermon series. So uh, we're going to be changing up the platform a little bit and be preaching through a series. It's rare that I announce my series this early. But um, I'll go ahead and give you the name of it. It's I'm going to be talking about a tomb, an upper room, and an olive tree. And so uh, every week we're going to uh, uh, be speaking about one of them. And I'm, uh, I'm really excited about that. Cannot wait. So that will all begin on Easter Sunday. So you don't want to miss the first, um, first of those messages. Invite friends and family start working on them now let's let's fill this house um, to celebrate the resurrection of our savior amen hebrews 13 and verse 7 let's read through this together everybody read it out loud remember them which have the rule over you who have spoken unto you the word of god whose faith follow considering the end of their conversation Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever. Be not carried about with divers and strange doctrines, for it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats which have not profited them that have been accompanied therein. We have an altar whereof they have no right to eat which serve the tabernacle. For the bodies of those beasts whose blood is brought into the sanctuary by the high priest for sin are burned without the camp. Now, pay very close attention to the next few verses. Wherefore, Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate. 
Let us go therefore unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. For here have we no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him therefore let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. But to do good and to communicate, forget not. For with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. Amen. By the help of the Lord this morning, I just want to uh, preach from this idea of better praise. Somebody say better praise. Amen. I am thankful for our worship and our Pentecostal apostolic styles of worship, but in case you're new to all of this, what we do, we want to root it and ground it and, um, and make the foundation of our worship the Word of God. We've got to make sure that what we do, we do based on what Scripture liberates or challenges us to do. And so the reason we lift our hands is because the Bible tells us that all men lift up holy hands without wrath or doubting. Several Old Testament scriptures, the hands, their hands were lifted in praise. We also uh, clap our hands because scripture tells us to clap your hands, all you people, and shout unto God with a voice of triumph. Amen. We open up our mouth and we shout. Somebody say shout. It implies that we're not timid in our worship, but we, we let we let our, our emotion and our passion become engaged in our worship. Amen. Something about lifting up your voice. It does something to your spirit. And, um, and so we open up our mouth and we, we shout. Psalmist David said, let them praise his name in the dance. We dance in church. Turn to the person beside you and tell them at least we're supposed to. Amen. We're commanded to dance and dance in the spirit and dance unto the Lord. And, uh, and so all of these methods, extensions of praise that we typically think of when we talk about praise are just a few of what God asks of us. Everything in serving God is a matter of praise. I don't live the way I live because I am constricted or forced to do this. I live the way I live as a matter of praise unto the Lord. Is there anybody that wants to give God praise through your lifestyle, through, through the words that you speak? Amen. Amen. If you would, join in with me and let's pray. Father, I thank you for every person that's gathered here. Help me. Can't do it without you, Lord. I need you. Anoint the words that I speak. God, as I preach your word, as you gave it to me, help me, Lord Jesus. Lord, stir something within our congregation. Let us be people. Lord, that, that continually challenge ourselves to give more unto you. Everyone said in Jesus' name. Everybody said amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor, give them a high five in Jesus' name, and you may be seated. As preachers, we often... Uh, incorrectly assume that just because we've preached something once, everyone remembers and can pick up where we left off. And so I want to, just for the sake of repetition or those that were not here previously, I want to remind you again that the letter of Hebrews that we've written from, although the author is not named uh, and there's strong evidence of, of by tradition, that it was the Apostle Paul. Uh, this letter was written to Christian Jews. And this uh, group of Jews, based upon uh, the content of the book of Hebrews, uh, they have been converted out of Judaism. And they had received this revelation concerning the gospel of Jesus Christ. But now, because of affliction and because of persecution. They are contemplating a retreat back into what God has elevated them out of. And the subject matter that this letter or book of the Bible of Hebrews addresses is in intentionally encouraging 
these Jews or uh, these believers in a very strategic way. And uh, he, Paul or whoever the writer was, presents as evidence all the sacred patri- uh, patriarchs and matriarchs and begins to, uh, in, in almost a sermon-like presentation, show the high points of Judaism and all of their greatest religious experiences. And then one by one, he begins to uh, compare them with the salvation gospel that is introduced by the life of Jesus Christ. There is a, a tragic doctrine and misconception concerning the Old Testament and law that unfortunately is being circulated in our, in our culture today. And that is that the law is bad. And it's somehow uh, contrary to the New Testament. And it's somehow fighting against uh, God's will in the New Testament. But I want to remind you that the God of the New Testament is the same God as the Old Testament. Amen. So when you hear people say, well, that was Old Testament or that was law, therefore it's not important. Um, you want to back away slowly when they say that. If the law generally is unimportant, one of those laws is do not kill. So just back away and, uh, and tell them just give me a little bit of running room. <clears throat> and, uh, and so the, the law established God's uh, will for humanity. The challenge was that in our fallen state, we turned it into a list of rules. We turned it into um, our, through human reasoning, uh, not only trying to obey the commandments, but we added to it commandments of our own. And that's what the Pharisees were guilty of. And they had stepped away from relationship. Now, God gave the rules, but the rules were set to... uh, to protect the relationship, not to abandon the relationship. Any married couple that tries to have a marriage based solely on a contract, you signed your name on that document, therefore you've got these following obligations, and there's no relationship beyond the contract, the legal contract. Your marriage is not going to last very long, and all the married folks say amen. Amen. It's not going to last long. And uh, because humanity seeks relationship, we need it. It's part of our DNA. Before mankind had an education, we needed relationship. Before there was ever a, a, um, a fullness of understanding of what God would ultimately do, we needed relationship. It was part of who we are. When God created Adam, he said, it is not good that man should be alone. That, that, that problem was not something God was announcing about himself. It was something that he, had, um, that he had established within us that we don't do too well when we're alone. We need relationship. And all the single folks say amen. Oh, I thought I'd get a bigger amen than that. <clears throat> and so it's, it's something that God has, has ordained for us and, and, and uh, calls us into relationship. And so Hebrews is presenting uh, all of these sacred elements of Judaism, of the Old Testament law. And um, he, is, uh, he presents them not to take away, but... To, to build upon. And, uh, and he begins to talk about uh, better things and how that, that what you had in the Old Testament law was good and it was important. But what you now have today is so much better. Somebody say it's better. Hebrews 1, he presents Jesus as, as better 
than the prophets and all the angels. And the presentation of, of Hebrews 1 is all about the Old Testament prophets and the angels and how that Jesus Christ is better than any of them. So while you're lifting up all the prophets and lifting up the glory of angels, I know folks that get more excited about an angel being in the room than they do Jesus being in the room. Now you want me to stop and pastor a little bit, I think, this morning. Amen. Uh, We've we got to be careful that we don't lose sight of, of, of what really matters. Jesus He is the King of kings and the Lord of lords and the creator of all. He's the Alpha and the Omega. Amen. I'm not going to get excited because we we have something lesser when uh, when something greater has been here all along and I haven't appreciated it. It's like celebrating. We have somebody that Hey, that, that works at the Microsoft store, and they're here this morning, and look, they got the name tag, and, and, and they're a manager of the store, and we all applaud. Wow, great to have a manager from Microsoft here. And, and yet, Bill Gates is a member and been sitting on the pew for years. I'm afraid sometimes we can get more excited about angels and about even ministers than we do the fact that since two or three of us gathered in this place, Jesus Christ, the head of all things, Lord of lords, King of the universe, the great omnipotent God wrapped in flesh. He is in this place today. We've got a reason to be excited right now. Somebody shout, Jesus is here. Hebrews 3 begins to speak of, uh, of Jesus as being better than the patriarch Moses. They worshiped Moses. They forgot his flaws. They forgot his issues. And yet they worshipped him. It's always fascinated me the high place that Moses had in the view of the New Testament um, uh, Levitical community or even the devout Jews. They 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 exalted him to this place where they would uh, lift him over at times even even God Himself. And yet in his day they cried out and said. Who made you a Lord over us? You know, sometimes we, we, can, we can exalt people after they're gone while we ridiculed them and, and ignored them while they were alive. I preached a bit about this this past, uh, past midweek service. I know folks that say, well, I, you know, I miss my elder. We, my my, my uh, pastor, Pastor James Kilgore, for many years, and they talk about, I sure miss Brother Kilgore. I missed him. He was such a great man. And, 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 and I, you know, I, I had a lot of conversations with Brother Kilgore. And I, I, you know, he was very candid with me. And, and he would come here from time to time before he passed. And he would, we would have conversations sitting in the office. And, and uh, you know, I talked to him. And, and, and we, we had a lot of wonderful conversations. And, 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 but I've heard people at times, I sure miss him. I, you know, I really wish he was here. And, and my question is often, why do you miss him? Hey, I don't understand. Why would you uh, miss something that you didn't appreciate when he was here? You didn't listen to him when he was here. Why on earth would you miss him now that he's gone? Amen. <laughs> And so, you know, we, we, we can often glorify somebody and, and lift somebody up and ignore the fact of why they were here. Moses was a servant of the Lord. Amen. And they, they crucified the Lord while exalting and praising Moses. But, but Hebrews says that, listen, as good as you think Moses was, Jesus is better. Hebrews 5 speaks of Aaron, the progenitor of the uh, Levitical priesthood. And he was the first of, the, of the, 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 these priests that would offer sacrifices unto the Lord. And, and um, again, another patriarch, spiritual icon that they, they, uh, they honored greatly. And, and Paul is telling them, as great as you think Aaron was, Jesus is better than Aaron. And he's, he's, the, he's the greatest of all priests. Hebrews 8 uh, speaks of the Old Testament covenant and, and begins to describe this covenant of Abraham and, and also the covenant of the law. And 
in all of this, he's not tearing down the law. Somebody say it's not, it's not torn down. It, it was the best thing that they had at the time. That's what he's presenting, that, that what you had in the law was the best thing going. But now you've got something better than what you used to have. And that better thing is Jesus Christ and the gospel that he represents. Hebrews chapter 10 uh, manifests the Old Testament uh, covenant and, and in all of its beauty. And, and, but, but it was just a, it was, it was just a down payment. And um, it, it was the, the blood that was shed. He, he begins to highlight that. And, and it says it was valuable blood. It was precious blood. But that precious blood that was shed on those Old Testament altars, those sacrificial lambs that had been inspected and, uh, and were placed upon the altar, they were great and they were important. And it was vital that you do that at that moment. But although that blood was precious, it wasn't valuable enough. It was just a down payment. And all that price um, could pay was the delay of the execution concerning our judgment uh, and, and, and the judgment of all humanity. And uh, that's, that's what the blood of those spotless lambs did. It, it was buying time. It was waiting on something better, a better sacrifice. And, uh, and, 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 and Hebrews says Jesus was that better sacrificed, and his blood was better than all the blood of the rams and all of the lambs that were slain for, for a temporary uh, uh, delay of judgment upon your life because of your sin. Amen. Somebody say amen. I just want to stop right here and say thank God for the blood. Amen. We don't, we don't talk about it enough. We don't sing about it enough. But had it not been for the blood of Jesus, every one of us would have a destiny of hell. Thank God for the blood. You have no hope without the blood of Jesus. You have no future without the blood of Jesus. Amen. None of us would be worthy. His sacrifice of blood was in our place. I didn't have anything Worthy enough to pay for the sin of my condition. But I'm so glad. Amen. Some of you have had this experience. I remember as a young man, uh, I was sitting at a table at a restaurant. And, and uh, you know, I was, I was single at the time. That mean, meant I was broke. And, um, and so I, I was sitting at the table and uh, eating at a nice restaurant and looking at the bill. And I remember uh, an elder minister walked along uh, beside my table. He never mentioned a word. He just reached down and grabbed the check off my table. I'm telling you, I was surprised. I was shocked. But then after I was surprised and shocked, I realized what he was doing, and I became very thankful. I said, thank God. I didn't have enough money to pay for this anyway. I'm so glad somebody else grabbed the bill. Let me tell you, that's what Jesus Christ did for every one of us. We had no hope. We were sitting at the table ready to wash dishes for eternity. But thank God Jesus stepped in and grabbed the bill and paid the price that we could not afford to pay. Amen. Hallelujah. And, and, uh, and so he picked up the tab. Hebrews 10 continues, and it, it talks about the faith of the patriarchs and how great their faith was. And, and, um, and it continues on through 11 and, and talks about how their acts of faith um, accomplished great things. And it, it, it birthed children out of barrenness. Their faith. It parted the waters and accomplished great miracles. Their faith allowed them to believe for promises and believe for healing and deliverance against insurmountable odds. Their faith of the patriarchs, it rescued from floods that destroyed everybody else. Amen. But thank God for, for Noah's faith. Amen. But this new kind of faith, that's available to the Holy Ghost filled New Testament church is better than the faith of all of those other patriarchs. Amen. Which brings us to the close of Hebrews and of our text. 
when the writer summarizes all his evidences and, and, and uh, by magnifying the commitment of the patriarchs and the matriarchs of faith throughout history, he says because of their commitment to, of faith, because they took a stand and believed God and, and they saw what could not be seen by anybody else and they trusted God beyond their own lives and they loved not their lives unto death. They took a stand not knowing whether God would come through. And they wandered in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having received not the promise, uh, they received a good report through faith. Thank God for their faith. Even though they didn't receive the promise, they had faith and they have a tremendous testimony of it. But he, he says they all, they all received a good report through faith. But God has provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. In other words, because God blessed their commitment of faith, because they acted in faith and trusted God, they, they, they have a good testimony. But now the baton is in our hands. Now it's up to you and I to take what they have handed down, this heritage of faith, this, this lineage of faith, and now it's up to you and I, amen, to run in faith into our future. Because now we're not talking about a promise. We're not looking forward to the promise of the Holy Ghost. Uh, after all God has given us, uh, we ought to run with more faith in Abraham, more faith in Isaac, more faith in Jacob. We've got a reason to give him more than what they gave. Amen. Somebody shout out, I have greater faith. My faith ought to be better. My faith, my, my commitment to the Lord should be greater than the commitment of those who trusted God without his spirit, who believed God with no manifestation, who took great risk and even gave their lives, and yet they did not have what you and I have today. If Noah could take a stand alone in his generation to the saving of his family, how much more should I who have received this inheritance and this blessing that is better than anything that Noah had, how much more should I take a stand even against my family if need be and say it doesn't matter what you want to do or what you want to do, we're getting on the ark and we're staying on the ark. I want my family to be saved. Amen. If Noah could do it without the Holy Ghost, how much more should the believers decide? As for me and my house, uh, we're going to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 If you're sitting with your family right now, just reach out and grab them and say, hey, listen, we're going to get on the ark. We're going to go to heaven. Come on, do it. Some of you are afraid of it. Some men need to take a stand in your family and say it doesn't matter who gives up. It doesn't matter who gives in. We're going to heaven. Our minds made up. If Noah can do it and be saved, then we're going to do it. See, the challenge of this Hebrew church was that even though they had received the gift of the Holy Ghost, even though they had received this glorious revelation of the mighty God in Christ, and, and they, they had been baptized in the beautiful saving name of Jesus, serving God had, had, had grown difficult. Affliction had come. Persecution had come. People were talking about them. People were ridiculing them. Even the religious community were looking at them as though they were some kind of abnormal, uh, abnormally. And, 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 and they were being persecuted. And, and the Roman government came against them and because they were not a recognized religion. They allowed for Judaism, but now this new Christianity came, and it was in conflict with Judaism, so that meant it was a new religion, and so now they had not only those, those Judaizers fighting against them, but they had the Roman government fighting against them. Many of them had family fighting against them. Everybody was against them, and in a moment 
of weakness, they begin to look back at what God had brought them out of. They begin to look back at the, at the old days and the old times and say, you know what? Life was a lot easier before God showed us all of this new stuff. Before God brought us up to this new level, our lives were so much easier. They begin to glorify their past. Man, things used to be good. Things used to be much easier. Yeah, yeah, that's just, man, we ought to go back. I just feel like maybe whoa, I'm, I'm tired of fighting. I'm weary with fighting. And in looking back at what they came out of, they somehow forgot to look at what they now had. Their focus was on yesterday. And, 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 and they had sort of this rose-colored image of what they used to be. They forgot about the barrenness of their experience. They forgot what it was like to serve God without the Holy Ghost. Amen. They, they, they just, it was ritual for them. They had forgotten they'd come out of ritual, and now they were in relationship. They would go to church for days and pray and, 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 and be committed to all of the precepts of the laws of Moses and all of the ceremonies. But now they were in a place where the Lord was present with them 24 hours a day. And when they would lift their hands, they would feel the Holy Ghost. And, and, and somehow they did not appreciate what they had. And they began to look back at what they used to have and began to glorify it, began to talk about it. And it began to grow in their mind. And, and, and they became thankful for, for what God had called them out of. Can I just stop and, and, and tell somebody, if your old way of living was so good, you would have never left it in the first place. If living in the world was so wonderful, then you would have never staggered your way into the church and say, I need a change in my life. But thank God, one day you realize the wages of sin are more than I can pay. I got to get to something greater than what I've got. Somehow, some way, you made it into the church and you found something better. Why don't we give him a better praise right now for the better thing that he's done? If living for God today is easier than living for the world yesterday, you are, your praise ought to magnify that testimony. Hallelujah. I, mm, amen. You may be seated. We often, in, in, in the church community, we, we, we say things like, well, men ought to be spiritual leaders in their home. Can I tell you, regardless of your current actions, you are a spiritual leader. Amen. They're leading by a spirit of righteousness or a spirit of carnality. But you're a spiritual leader. You got to decide where you're going to lead your family. You gotta decide, are we gonna serve the Lord or, or are we gonna do what we have always done? One of the last public addresses by Joshua, he stands to the podium and quoted the scripture already. The challenge was as an old man, he, they're, they're in the promised land, they're in Canaan now. They've been through that whole journey and, and now they've inherited the promise of God, the promised land. They're living in the promise. When Joshua makes that statement, choose ye this day whom you will serve, whether it be the gods of your forefathers, the gods that were idols, or the gods of the Amorites in whose land ye now dwell. But as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. You've got a choice today. Amen. You, 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 can, you can worship the gods of this generation. That's what he was saying. You, you, can, you, you can worship all of the spirits of this age. But there's another kind of idolatry that, that you are going to be tempted by. And that's the gods of yesterday. 
when you turn your yesterday into something greater than the God today. Amen. And that's what Hebrews tells us. It says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's not the God of yesterday. He's the God of right now. Amen. Amen. You, you, you can worship your experience yesterday until it becomes an idol of your own making. But I'm telling you, God wants you to do something today. God wants you to worship today. There is a responsibility to every one of us. I thank God for what you did yesterday. But right now, you need to ask yourself, am I going to serve the gods of yesterday or will I serve the gods of today? Amen. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. Now, all right. Now I, I got about one-fourth of you on board. Amen. And, and, and so we, we need to make sure that we're leading in the right direction, men. We need men to start leading in worship. <laughs> so we, need, we, got, we got a lot of ladies that worship. We need some men that know how to worship. I've had a rough day. I'm tired. I work for a living. Tell that to your wife. <clears throat> See how that goes. Hey, I, I've had to stay home and babysit kids. It ain't easy. Even if she's not working a job, it, 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 it can wear you out. All the men say amen. 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 All the, <laughs> that's right. We, we, we've, we need to be leaders in worship. Amen. Young people, we need to be leaders in worship. Amen. Thank God for the young ladies that are committed. We, we need some young men that are committed, young men that are not afraid to worship the Lord. I've often wondered, I've often wondered when Miriam grabbed the tambourine and started dancing and leading all the maidens through in that worship song, where were the young men? Thank God for young ladies that will take the, the, the initiative that if nobody else is going to do it, we're going to do it. Thank God for the, some, some sensitive ladies that say all the men can be in a room with Jesus and everybody's jockeying for position. But thank God for some women that say, I don't care about position. I don't care about what anybody says about me. I brought something valuable. I'm going to break it. Let them criticize me if you want to. Let them talk about me. But I brought something to break over Jesus. I'm going to pour out something valuable. Are there, are there any Marys in the house that have come to the house of the Lord and you don't care what anybody thinks about you? You're going to bring the Lord something valuable today. All right. Many have postured the question, why was David a man after God's own heart since he had many instances of unbelief, did great things for God, but what was it about David that allowed him to be a man after God's own heart? Tremendous failure. I mean, he, he had some issues. David had real issues. Uh, you, you can almost point to every Old Testament villain and compare it with the life of David and say, well, David had that issue too. And yeah, well, David had that moment too. And David had a time when he was a little you know, shaky on morality. And he, he had a time when he was fighting the wrong battles and killing people that he should have been protecting. And, and, and David had some issues with ignoring uh, problems even in his own family when he should have dealt with it. And, 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 and it brought destruction. And uh, David had a lot of issues. And yet, Scripture says David was a man after God's own heart. Let me tell you why David was a man after God's own heart. David was a worshiper. He was a man driven by praise and thanksgiving. Well, I, know, I know that's real deep because we heard it so much that we don't really appreciate it. Let me tell you what David did that few others of his generation and, and tenure did in the Old Testament. David determined, no matter what's going on in my life, no matter what I'm feeling, no matter what I'm not feeling, I will praise the Lord. From the rising of the sun till the going down of the same, 
the name of the Lord shall be praised. Everybody else has got priority. Well, I got a business to run. I got things to do. I got to build a house. Amen. It was David that said, except the Lord build the house, they that build it labor in vain. If I don't get God into my life, then nothing else that I endeavor, my career, in my job, nothing else matters. Men, the most important thing that you can do for your family is not bring home the bacon. You need to bring home the praise. You need to bring home the devotion. You need to bring home the prayer. God is looking for some men that are not ashamed, that have made up their mind, I come to praise him. Doesn't matter what others do. I'm going to worship the Lord. That means that I've got to raise my hands even though my wife's not raising her hands. I've got to praise. I've got to shout hallelujah when I'm the only one that's shouting. Somebody who wants God to call you after his own heart, you ought to just take a moment and just stand and give God a better praise than what you've been given. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Well, Pastor, you don't know I've made some tragic mistakes and I'm holding on to I'm holding on to the gospel by a thread. I'm holding on to my walk with God. You may be seated by a thread. I don't know how on earth God would ever forgive me, how God would ever use me. I've made so many mistakes in life. I want to remind you that David had similar moments when he felt like God was about to kill him for, in judgment for his sin. He felt as though he had failed God too much. Here's David's take on it. David reminded the Lord, God, I am a praiser. I'm a worshiper. And by the way, Lord, if you kill me, the dead praise not the Lord. That's what he said. God, if you want this praise and you like my worship, God, please don't kill me because from my dying breath, breath, I'm going to praise you. I may not be perfect, but I will praise you. Every time I get, <laughs> amen, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, the name of the Lord is going to be praised. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wonder, is there anybody standing in judgment before God could point at your praise life, your worship life, and say, God, my worship is a good reason to hang on to me. My worship is a good reason to protect me. My worship is a, is a good reason to bring me through every trial. Amen. Maybe see, I've got to hurry. I've got to hurry. Amen. Jesus Christ is something better. He's worth much more than anything you had yesterday. That's what Hebrews is telling them. I ought to bring, amen, I ought to bring thanksgiving in my heart. It was the blood of Jesus that made the difference. Amen. And so, <clears throat> amen. What, what, what he's, he's trying to emphasize with these people that are on the fence, that you need to appreciate what God has given you. You need, to, you need to be thankful for the blessings that you have in your life. Stop looking back at what you used to have. You have a chance right now to have so much more than you've ever had in your past. And, and so the book of Hebrews, he it compares Jesus to all these other things. The purpose, again, was not to tear down yesterday, to promote, but to promote the idea that yesterday was good. But what you have available to you right now is, in Jesus is better than what you're considering as the good old days. Jesus Christ represented the gospel of the good news. Remember, his primary mission here on earth was to be our kinsman redeemer. He taught, he laid hands on the sick, he cast out devils, but his primary purpose was to come as the perfect lamb, as the sacrifice for the sins of all humanity. He said, I've come that ye might have life and ye might have it more abundant. 
Amen. He came so that you and I would not be judged and you and I would not have to pay the price for sin. John 5 and 38, Jesus said, Search the Scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life. For they are they which testify of me. And if ye will not come to me, that ye might have, uh, have life, um, I receive not honor from men. But I know you that ye have not the love of God in you. So as our kinsman redeemer, what he was saying I, in this statement, I, I receive not honor from men. He's saying, I'm not looking for praise right now. I, my, my, my role is not to generate the applause of everybody. My role is to come and die. My role is to come and serve. I've come to seek and save that which was lost. So what you do right now uh, isn't, your, the importance of what you're doing right now is not that you're not appraising me or giving me glory. That's not why I'm here. However, however, if you're not if you aren't really appreciating who's standing in front of you, if you can't appreciate that, I'm not calling you to praise me right now, but if you can't appreciate who I am and, and you, you don't, you're not drawn to me, then, then you have an issue. You, you don't have the love of God in you. Amen. In other words, that you ought to just be able to see Jesus, recognize who he is, and give him glory. It ought to be a pragmatic matter. You ought to be able to say, well, Jesus is teaching and, and, and he's powerful, and so I ought to be drawn to him because he represents God. Amen. He is the manifestation of this spirit of the of God. And so now he has he, the word has become flesh and he represents what we could not see before. Now we are looking upon him face to face. But if you don't love me and if you're not drawn to me when you see me, amen, you're looking at me. You know who I am. You know where you are. Your knowledge of who I am ought to draw praise out of you. But if you can't do that, don't claim that you love of God. Don't claim that you're spiritual because you know better. You Here I am and you're not giving me any glory. It's revealing who you are, not who I am. And I want to tell every Holy Ghost filled believer the reason why we don't praise God when we come together in the house of the Lord. And anytime we wake up and we're worship, the reason why we are, are timid in our praise and, and dismissive of worship is because, not because of, of we're waiting on something. Listen, we already know enough now. We have, we, we have, God has done enough for us already that it ought to be just a matter of fact that when I come to the house of the Lord, I know he's here. That means he's worthy of praise. I don't have to have anybody tell me to praise. He's worthy of I cannot claim to love God and, and not worship that's what he was saying. You cannot claim, I, I love the Lord. Not if you're not a worshiper. Not if you're not drawn to me. Not if worship is your least favorite. If you came to church to hear a nice sermon and fold your arms and say, oh, good thought, Pastor. We, we ought to have such a love in our heart that it doesn't matter if the preacher stutters his way through a two-hour sermon and, and gets all the verbs and the pronouns mixed up. It doesn't matter. It's not about the man. It's about him. It's all about Jesus. I know too much. God's brought me through too many battles. and Amen. He's brought me through too many valleys. He's worthy of praise. Somebody ought to lift up your voice. Somebody ought to give him something better than what you've given him. Him all day long. He's worthy. All right. Uh, hallelujah. Musicians, please come. Jesus was our perfect example. He was our perfect example of how to walk. Amen. And yet, even when you are at your best, people will still hate you. Don't take it personal. Don't be discouraged. Amen. They don't hate you. They hate the anointing that's on your life. 
Some people are giving up their praise because they might be criticized by others. I want to tell you he's worthy of it. Whether people mock you, make fun of you at the restaurant afterwards, it should not matter. Blessed are you. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you. Rejoice and be exceeding glad. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. Amen. That means that even when people are talking about you, the criticisms of others, God takes the criticism and turns it into a blessing. Blessing, blessing. Every insult, every gossip, God turns it into a blessing. We've got a reason to praise. Somebody shout, Jesus is better. Say, he's better than anything I've had before. Now, here, here comes the challenge. Hebrews 12, wherefore Jesus also, that he might sanctify the people with his own blood, suffered without the gate, outside of prestige, outside of pride. Amen. Jesus, for the purpose of saving us, took on a, a, a role of humility so that he could give us something better. And he stepped away from the glory of his house <laughs> so that he could suffer and save us. That's what he's saying. Amen. And then causation sets in. Hebrews 13, 13 and 13. Let us therefore because of that, because Jesus suffered outside the gate, let us therefore go unto him without the camp, bearing his reproach. In other words, if you're looking for a place of prestige and looking professional and you got it all together, what you're missing out on in, in, in what you consider successful Christianity is that Christ is nowhere near you. He's living in a place of ridicule. He's living in a place of suffering, a place of sacrifice. So if you want to be a follower of Jesus, you got to get out of the seat of the scornful. you got to get out of that place of prestige, and you need to go to where Jesus is. Amen. Then he says, for we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. I love that. It's not about here. This world's not my home. So God has given us something better. But guess what? He's got something better than what we got now. So I'm not going to get caught up in the now. I'm going to thank God for what he's already given me. Yeah, I'm going to be grateful. So I've got more reasons to praise God than just what I have right now or what I don't have right now. If I didn't have anything right now, I've still got plenty of reasons to praise because there's a city that's coming that's better than anything that I've got right. Why on earth would I ever go back to a world of sin? I've got better things now. i got better things in my future. But then I come to my text. I'll close with this. By him, therefore, let us Offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. Notice he didn't say, let's offer praise. It was sacrifice of praise. And to clarify it, you need to get your mouth engaged. That is, the fruit of our lips giving thanks unto his name. Well, I'm just praising him on the inside. After all the Lord has done for you, you ought to open up your mouth and shout loud. Come on. After all the mess God's brought you out of, come on, you know your testimony. After all God has done, he deserves. You know, we're guilty in an apostolic movement of becoming addicted to applause and becoming absent with true praise. We know how to applaud because it's the appropriate time. We could do it on cue. Everybody else starts clapping, I start clapping. But when you get your mouth engaged, amen, 
That's why the psalmist David said, clap your hands, all ye people, and shout with the voice of triumph. It's not just about, it's about getting the whole me involved in worshiping the Lord. Because when he saved me, he didn't just save my hands. He saved me from the top of my head to the sole of my foot. I'm going to give him praise that he's worthy of. time. Uh, I, I got several more. I'm not going to preach it all. Amen. Uh, I, I had no idea what was going to be said in the pre-service today, but several things that were mentioned. It was all coming down to this. Come on. God's worthy of better than this. God's worthy. He's done more for us. Why does God need a preacher to remind us that he's worthy? Because we have lost our spirit of thanksgiving and we are we have become so consumed with our troubles that we have ignored our blessing we have ignored what God's brought us out of and that's why people are walking away from church one after the other they don't they don't understand it parents you ought to praise God not only for yourself but because there's some kids that are watching you and mom and dad they they if they praise God with what they're going through, then maybe there's something to this. Your kids are going to follow your example of praise. Amen. God's brought us through it. In Acts 16, Paul and Silas sitting in a prison cell. Tremendous example of sacrifice, of praise. Amen. Bound because of the message. They could have been suffering in, in their, 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 their devotion, their sacrifice. We've been beaten for the name of the Lord. We've been bruised for the name of the Lord. Uh, look at how we have it. Amen. Just the sacrifice of their flesh might have been enough, but it would not have changed their current circumstance. Look at what happens when they forget about how they feel. They forget about what happened to them, how they were treated unfairly, and they just make up their mind in the midnight hour. Hey Amen. I don't feel like it. I don't want to do it. I'm tired. I'm hurting. But here goes anyway. We're going to sing praises unto the Lord. God, you have been good to me. Lord, I love you. Come on, I know somebody here. You're going through a trial right now. I thank God for your faithfulness to church. But what God is looking for is a better kind of praise. He's looking for people that can make a sacrifice. Come on. It hurts. Good. That's the kind of praise that shakes prisons. I don't feel like it. That's, that's the kind of praise that God loves. He said with this type of sacrifice, God is well pleased. David said, I'm not going to offer up to the Lord something that doesn't cost me. We ought to follow his example. Let's give him some praise. Praise that hurts. Praise.
Father, now, if we could, with every hand lifted, I just want to feel the Holy Ghost here. God's doing something in this place. In this atmosphere, God's doing some amazing things. I just feel like God just healed somebody in their body right now. I feel it. Hallelujah. Powerful things happen when we praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. I want to, for, for many, for many in the church world, we have degrees of devotion. We look at, at, at worship in strange little paradigms and think of it really out of God's order. I heard someone recently say, well, you need to go from Thanksgiving in, in, into, in, or go to from, from, yeah, Thanksgiving into praise. You know, Thanksgiving is, is a whole other level of praise. When you're worshiping God for who he is, sometimes that can just be based on stated word. It can be based on the logos. I know the word says he is, but I've never experienced that in my life. But then when God does it for you, it, it changes from just a stated appreciation into experience and when when we begin to think about the goodness of the Lord it, it almost feels mechanical but it is a it is an exalted type of praise under the Lord because now you're not just pointing at the stated or the, the, the logos the written attributes of God when God revealed himself to Abraham as Jehovah Jireh he was not changing anything about himself it, it happened. I mean, he, he was Jehovah Jireh from the beginning of time. All that happened was suddenly Abraham realizes, oh, he is Jehovah Jireh right now in my situation. Amen. And so when, when you get a revelation of who the Lord is, it's powerful. But don't think for one moment that he changed just for your sake. He, he, was, he was your healer long before you got your healing. He was your deliverer long before you got delivered. So he is worthy of the same kind of praise as you would give after he's manifested it in your life. So, well, I'm going to, if man, if God gives me that new job, I'm going to shout. Listen. He is the giver of jobs <laughs> before you ever get the nameplate on the door. So if we could ever learn how to give God credit, there's one thing about God. He is driven by principle. He's not a respecter of persons, but he is a respecter of principle. When we start giving God credit for being our healer, it's amazing what happens. God shows up and proves everybody right. When we give him credit for providing, he will provide. Amen. When we begin to worship him for who he is, even though it's not manifesting in our life, God will often bring it to pass. Never saw that coming. That's why Job could turn around and see the needs of his friends. Man, my friends are going through it right now. And he could have enough faith to believe God for everybody else, even though he was suffering. He turns around and, and begins to lay hands on his friends who have it pretty good considering who he is. But when he started praying for his friends, God said, that's what I was waiting on. I was looking for somebody that would act in faith, absent of what they were going through themselves. And he begins to pray for everybody else, and God says, Oop, time to turn the captivity of Job and bless him with twice as much as what he had before. Some of us are waiting to come out of the valley before we praise him. You ought to start praising him right now because that could be the thing that opens up the door worthy of the highest praise. Here's what I want us to do in closing. Everybody here has their own testimony. Everybody's got something that God has brought you through. And often it's things you can't talk about. The apostle talked about the things that you know we're thankful for, the things that I'm now ashamed of. You know, there's parts of your testimony you don't share with everybody else. Things that God's done for you, kept you from. So I want you to think of one thing in your life right now. One thing. One thing. Not general. I'm talking about things that, that when God stepped in and brought hope out of hopelessness and you just 
God just, you know, it just in, in your mind, it, it just transformed that moment. Think about it right now. You got it? I want you to close your eyes. I want you to imagine how you felt in that moment. You remember how low you felt? Remember how helpless you felt? Remember how you felt like life was never going to get better? And people walked out on you, or maybe you sinned and failed God. You'd never get the mercy of the Lord again. You felt so low. You wondered if God could ever forgive. Remember that moment? Remember the feeling, the cold feeling of hopelessness? You remember that moment? Now, in just a moment, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to have you. You can do whatever you feel. But I, I just got—I have a feeling that that you're going to be—you're <laughs> you're going to feel motivated to praise. Because now I want you to—I want you to think the hopelessness of that, of that moment. Now I want you to think of what it felt like when the Spirit of God either prompted somebody, sent His Spirit, you got a word from the Lord, and suddenly that darkness—it was gone, and you realize God still loves me. He came through. You remember how that felt? Remember that. It, it was like a, a liberating when the chains begin to fall. Amen. Come on, keep your eyes closed. Come on, you remember the feeling? That moment that God began to change everything? Just in a moment when you realize He hasn't given up on me. <laughs> he loves me. He answers prayer. He's a good God. Come on, let that thanksgiving turn into, into adoration to the Lord. Sacrifice of your lips. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. Sacrifice of praise. Come on, that's it. Sacrifice. You're tempted with backsliding because you haven't been sacrificing in your praise and thanksgiving. You're becoming discouraged because you've lost your sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. You're tempted with things you haven't thought about in years because you've lost that habit of praising God. Now we do what we feel and we do what's convenient. But God is looking for people that will get back to that place. When serving the Lord was a lot easier it was because it was a time you were so grateful for what God had delivered you from, what the Lord had brought you out of. I think we need to stir that up in this church again. Stir up a sacrifice of praise. Hallelujah. I wonder if one more time we can lift our hands to the Lord. Let's give him a better praise. something special about tonight's service. I encourage you. I'm going to have Brother Daniel Ed's one of our ministers come and pray. And once he's finished praying, you can consider yourself dismissed. But before he comes, I just, let me say this, that, that I want to encourage you to be in the service this evening. I just feel like God's going to do something. But when we come, let's come with a sacrifice of praise. Amen. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Be thankful in him and bless his name, for the Lord is good. Amen. When we come into the house of the Lord, let's give him the very best that we can. Hallelujah. He's worthy. We'll gather in the gymnasium before service this evening. I encourage you to join us for a time of praise. For all of our guests that are here, I encourage you before you leave that you take those tokens that you were given earlier in the service by the cafe. 
also give us an opportunity if we haven't met you yet to meet you. And uh, then I also ask that at some point before you leave today, take a step of faith. Do something. Don't just be moved and stirred. You know, beholding your, head, your face in a, in a mirror and going your way. Forget what manner of person you are. That's what the Word of God does. It reveals us. I encourage you to do something with it. Faith without works is dead. There's three things that you can do. Uh, stop by the by the uh, connections desk outside and sign up for our what we call the membership experience. It's just kind of an orientation, tell you about the church, how to get involved in the church, how to become a member, find a ministry. You can uh, sign up for one of our small groups. We have them every month. Great way to connect with other believers. Great food and fellowship every month. You'll get to know people in the church. Great, easy, easy way to connect. And then also we have Bible studies that occur uh, throughout the week. And I encourage you, sign up for one of those out in the uh, foyer. Amen. Brother Edens, would you come in? Yes, Shine. Yes, thank you very much. Shine begins this coming uh, Thursdays. Ladies, before you leave, that's a good act of faith for you. Sign up uh, for Shine in the foyer. Again, it, it is one of the most dynamic meetings, uh, not just in this church, but in Pentecost right now. And it's uh, we are at capacity. It's the, oh, We want our ladies to be here. Folks are coming from other countries just to be here. Our ladies, we need to be here. Let's participate in this. It will be a blessing to you. If you, Again, if there's some way that you cannot afford it, all you have to do is um, just mention that to my wife or one of the ladies at the table. Say, listen, I can't afford it. Now, if you can afford it, invest in it, please. But, but if you cannot, if, if money is an issue, we want everyone to be able to attend. And uh, ladies, and uh, of course, men, we need your help as well. Amen. If you would, let's bow our heads. If you feel like lifting your hand, lift your hand. But we're going to go to the Lord in prayer. Lord God, I'm asking, Lord, that you would take this word and apply it to our hearts and our lives, that we would take this word, God, that it would not fall on stony ground, but we would apply it to our soul. God, I'm asking that you would keep your hand of protection upon us. Bring us back here tonight to worship you, God. Let your power be done in this place tonight as well. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And you are dismissed at this time.